Hey friends, today we are hanging out at Universal Studios Hollywood and I am so excited. This is my first time ever being here and I cannot wait to ride the world famous studio tour where I'm going to be reunited with Jaws and then also the Jurassic World ride and I can't wait to see the Indominus Rex animatronic. There is so much to do, lots of food, lots of rides. Anywho's, let's go do this. It took me just about an hour and a half to get over to Universal Studios Hollywood from the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California. And there was a little bit of traffic, but I'm so happy I'm here. They rolled out the red carpet and I'm ready to start the day. I also spared no expense and got the Universal Unlimited Express Pass so I can ride all the rides as much as I want without having to wait in line. And also, no pun intended, to the John Hammond reference, especially because I'm wearing a Jurassic Park Roosevelt and a white fedora but I'm very excited for the day only in the park for 10 seconds and look at this Frankenstein I love it hi friend are, are you gonna give me a hug oh <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing thank you so much thank you yes this is great <laughs> That was amazing. I didn't even know Frankenstein hugged people, but I love it. <laughs> it was so awesome. And it just kind of reminded me of Monster Squad. I know it's not Universal Monsters, but I grew up with the Monster Squad and I got excited with like Frankenstein and the little girl and it was really awesome. We got Frankenstein, we got Beetlejuice, and then we got Trolls. <laughs> this is too good. Look at the way he is strutting. <laughs> <laughs> I just came upon this little performance here with the trolls, but look at the way Dracula is creeping in in the background. Isn't that crazy? Look at it. It's like he's staring right into my soul. Either he's looking at me or he's choosing the troll as his next victim. Oh my lord. He just gave me that signal. Did you see that? Look at this. Oh my lord, that is amazing. Were you looking at me back there, sir? I'm stalking a vampire. <laughs> Thank you. I think I want to head to Jurassic World first and do that and then the studio tour. But as I'm looking at the wait times, I don't even think I needed to get the Unlimited Express. Like honestly, these wait times are so low and I'm used to going to Universal Studios Orlando where everything's so busy, but it's amazing, it's a Monday. I'm not too sure if you can see it, but Jurassic World's only a 20 minute wait. Revenge of the Mummy's a five minute wait. Like everything is so low. Even the Harry Potter Forbidden Journey ride's only 30 minutes. So I guess, I mean, we'll use it anyway. And it's so strange seeing everything like this. Like right over here is Hogsmeade, and then right here is Springfield. And I think we're gonna head down to the lower lot because that's where Jurassic World is at. I feel like I should have done a little bit more research on things to eat at Universal Studios Hollywood. So I want to try to find some like best food items, but for now I just got myself a little coffee. All right, we're gonna leave Springfield and make our way down to the lower lot, down to Jurassic World. Isn't this so cool that everything is like basically on hills? Like we're gonna take <laughs> escalators down. Wow, holy moly, the views are amazing. Like I said, we have to take the escalators down and look at this view. Oh man, it's amazing, right? I love it, you can see Jurassic World right here. You can see Super Nintendo World getting built right there. Transformers, and then all of the studios or the stages here. And it looks like they're probably putting stuff together for Halloween Horror Nights, and I'm so excited. Like this is, this is really amazing. Also, I get to ride the mummy here because over at Universal Orlando, it's under refurbishment. So that gets me excited. Oh, and Secret Life of Pets. They have that ride here, but not in Orlando. Welcome to Jurassic World. Ooh, and they have the raptor encounter over here too. I am so excited for all of this. This is a completely different ride, if you guys don't know, uh, than Jurassic Park. This is Jurassic World. I'm also very excited because here at Universal Studios Hollywood, I can film on the rides and show you guys. So I'm going to be able to film on the ride and show you guys. And that's what we're going to do with Jurassic World right now. Just look at that. 
a 10 minute wait, but I do have my uh, Universal Express Pass. So we're gonna skip that 10 minute wait. <laughs> Looks like we're going front row. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're gonna get soaked. And by the way, I'm bald. legs I love this though that was amazing wow that was amazing did you see the Adominus Rex animatronic I was speechless and in awe it was so beautiful what an amazing ride that was I mean you do get soaked just in the pants nothing up top but wow I also brought a plastic bag with me so I could shove my camera in there real quick and everything's good and I love it I'm doing it again I'm doing it again all right, now that the Jurassic World business is taken care of, I want to head back up to the upper lot and uh, go do the studio tour so I can see Jaws again. But I'm definitely coming back and riding. And now we're going to go back on the escalator and head on up.
You raise me up. I think my allergies are starting to get a little bit under control. I don't know if uh, it's the air here in California, but as soon as I got off the plane and I was just outside for a little bit, my eyes started getting super red and watery in my nose, but I, maybe I'm getting accustomed to it. I feel like a lot better and like not so itchy. Well, I just got some amazing news. On my way over to the studio tour, I found out that you can actually bring drinks on with you while you ride the ride. Like, so I'm gonna grab a beer. I'm gonna grab a Duff because we're in Springfield and then we're gonna actually take our beer and drink it as we're doing the ride and seeing all these iconic movie sets and Jaws and I'm just so excited for this. I have officially purchased my most expensive beer in a theme park ever. Like, I always thought Disney prices were pretty high, but $17 for this Duff. $17, technically and even 20 with the tip, but well worth it. I can't wait to take it on the Backlot Tour. Mm. Here we go, it's time. There you are, now we're talking. That's the way, right? <laughs> He's the one that gave me the uh, heads up about the beer on the tour and I said, okay, wait a minute. I backed right up and uh, picked myself up $17 beer. To give you guys a little backstory, I mean, I'm sure some of you guys know I talk about this a lot, but growing up, I wasn't able to come to theme parks and it was my dream to come to Universal Studios, ride Jaws and King Kong, and I always was just always thinking about it. I used to watch The Wizard. You guys remember that movie with uh, Fred Savage? And they actually ran and escaped into Universal Studios and it was like a dream for me and my brother to do that. And uh, yeah. I'm gonna get to do it today. and I, I got to actually do Jaws at Universal Studios Orlando right before it closed down. So this is another bucket list accomplishment for me in my life. There it is. The world famous studio tour. I can see Jaws, King Kong, Fast and Furious. I am, I, like this is it. This is, this is probably my childhood. I've got my beer and my 3D glasses, and here comes our tram. Look at this. I'm ready. Let's bring you a very special guest of the day. You might have heard of this guy for the first time on a show called Saturday Night Live. He's now the star and host of the Tonight Show on NBC. Here he is, my friend. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy, take it away. Ooh. Oh, hey there. You made it. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. But we do have some of our more famous picture cars coming up on your left-hand side. So my favorite vehicles are the Flintstones ones. Those are modified golf cart chassis with fiberglass shells on top. Recently got a Harry Potter Ford Anglia. They use 17 and a half of those throughout the franchise. But the gyrosphere from Jurassic World is missing something. What's missing from it? The bubble, right? The glass. Except it also wasn't there during filming. It was added in post-production using computer-generated imagery because glass is very reflective. You can maybe see it in my sunglasses or my regular glasses. You might catch a camera lens or a crew member in the shot. So thank you, John oh, Jurassic Park's coming. Gotta get well my uh, John Hammond look on. As I bring up the right clip. All right, so this one, make sure you're looking up at your screens. No need to look left and right for the car. <laughs> Alright, we got some more nano DNA for you. Oh no! So they paused it right here on your screen. Because the left side that the mobile app has been pushed off of with Julianne Moore dangling from the seatbelt straps is not a cliff at all. Or the lost world. That dinosaur was Dressed popping out and I seen him spitting side. water. This is Ludman. The production had to create special weather effects by stage 21. And here in Old Mexico, we are going to give you a demonstration. Footsteps. Door slamming. The sound of rushing water from a flash flood. I warned none of you about. Oh, that one didn't reach 
the third car this time, Byron. On our first tour, we could film six westerns each day. We made almost 300 of them that very first year of filmmaking. It was big business for us. And you might have also recently seen these sets in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. These are the 60s western sets that Leo's character was filming on. Look at this, they're actually filming back there right now. Oh, you can see some of the other um, things, the set that's put up where they're filming right now was also used in Pirates of the Caribbean 2 when Jack Sparrow has to go um, sign up 99 souls to repay a debt. He just goes to a bar to sign up all the drunk guys. It's decorated as the Marcadero Plaza, so we are in San Francisco. The signage is really a great way to tell an audience a location because you could just put Union Square and you think you're in LA. Times Square, maybe somewhere in Tokyo or Gonna have some flashing lights here, guys. Oh! Oh! Oh no! I wanted to do Earthquake in Universal Orlando, but that's great. Right, so much water, We're coming so up on snow. Amity Island here. Well this is the moment for me. <laughs> there it is. Best day ever. Best day ever. It didn't Look at him, he's coming back. Wherever you were on the island, wow. you could hear the radio voice. They were always saying, the shark is not working. To offer our guest cut for a race. And let me tell you, he is the best concierge. He puts those mints on the pillows. He'll go down to the, to the grocery store and get you some snacks if you need it. Two, look, door to trunk service. You are not going to get that at the Sheraton down at the bottom of the hill, you guys. It's only here at the Bates Motel. So again, let me know. We can get you a killer deal. 
Hey Norman, how's it going? What else can my guests expect from you? Any fun stuff, yeah? Oh, he's gonna make you dinner. I'm sure it'll be delicious. Maybe some steak, like a nice filet. That is so cool. This is the house to the original psycho. And now we're coming to an airplane crash. We are now at the crash site scene from Steven Spielberg's film, War of the Worlds, starring Tom Cruise and Dakota Fanning. Yes, this is a real 747, a purchase and destroy for the production. And if you join us for a VIP tour, you get to walk onto the sets and take photos up close and personal, so consider that next time you're here with us. Set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Stephen had. When we first began to sit down to talk about the world, I thought, what well, if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something. Dollars, which, when you think about it, that's a great deal. It's an entire airplane. But then you do have to ship it from the airplane graveyard out in the Mojave Desert to the middle of Los Angeles. That's like another $200,000. Looks like we're heading into Fast and the Furious. Mechanic on Dom's crew. We don't work for nobody. Cop, I suggest you clear out of here, otherwise we can't guarantee your safety. Guarantee my safety? I'm the one holding the gun. Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. Uh, this is our turn. Okay, guys, it's showtime. Oh, really enjoyed your Wow, that was amazing. I loved it so much. <laughs> The studio tour was everything I thought it was going to be, plus so much more. And if you guys couldn't tell, I wrote it several times. Now, I'm going to edit it so it looks like it's just one consistent ride, but I wrote it, I think, three times. Oh yeah, three times. So I spent just around two and a half, three hours down here just riding this tour, and that's how much I loved it, because it's different perspectives. If you sit all the way in, you get to sit next to Jaws when he comes out, which I suggest is like my favorite spot. And then if you come on the other side, you get to see more. And then also if you're in the middle of the cart so three times I'm gonna combine that all together to make an excellent studio tour for you hi are you just hanging out over here oh that's really cool oh by your lonesome very cool I like it oh yeah very fitting Hollywood I love it can we take a photo yeah oh I'm game Marilyn Monroe was really really nice as soon as I got off the studio tram she was just sitting there just really enjoying life that's really awesome now I think we'll make our way over by the Secret Life of Pets, which is the newest attraction here at Universal Studios, and maybe get something to eat over in this direction itself. They do have a Mel's here, but I'm looking for something a little unique. Let's see what they got going on in the French Street Bistro. Seems a little fancy, a little snazzy, huh? Looks like they got some pastries and then also some crepes. I see a strawberry, uh, strawberry chocolate crepe, a banana Nutella one, and then they got some sandwiches like a hot uh, brie sandwich or a turkey and Swiss. Hmm, I think I just might get a coffee and a crepe. A coffee and a crepe. Have a little coffee and a crepe before we go on Secret Life of Pets. And look at this nitro cold grill. I don't know if you can see it too well. I'm going to show you in a second here. Isn't that just so majestic looking? It's like there's a whole nother world inside my coffee, and I cannot wait to be a part of it. Ooh, and it looks like they're preparing my crepe fresh. A little fresh crepe here. Oh, that looks fancy. Oh, don't mind if I do. That's me. Thank you. Well, look at that. <laughs> a nice little fancy crepe, and like I said, we got the coffee here. Even though the nitro is all gone, now it's just black coffee. <laughs> That's strong. I like it though. Now we're gonna dive into the crepe. And I don't have a knife, I only have a fork. So I'm gonna try to 
like maneuver it. Yep. No. Nope. Yep. No. Nope. Uh, maybe. Hold on. Whoa, oh, oh. Slippery little sucker. There we go. That's delightful. <laughs> you know, I really do like crepes. I think they're very light and refreshing, and I like Nutella and I like banana. Oh yeah, this is a good, this is a good little quick snack. I'm trying to decide on where I want to get Din Din tonight. You know what I mean? The park is only open 10 to 7. So it's kind of like weird hours, but even Universal Orlando sometimes closes early. I've seen it close at like 5 o'clock in the afternoon, so 7 o'clock isn't that bad at all. And uh, yeah, I don't know where we're going to get Din Din. Maybe a little uh, city walk? Oh, that's a big bite. Now it's time for the secret life of pets off the leash. It says a 40 minute wait, but we got our uh, handy dandy express pass. You know, I didn't watch any videos of this ride, so I'm going in this completely blind. I have no idea what to expect. I know it's like a dark ride. Ooh, we're going upstairs. And I'm excited, I like the movie. Oh wow, look at this is the queue. We're not even on the ride yet. No homes? No homes? Well, who feeds them? Who rubs their bellies and eggs? Who throws the wall and then waits for them to get in and get frozen again? This has like got to be one of the most well-themed queues I've ever seen. We walked through a kitchen, a living room. This is really cool. Everything from the books in the case. I like it a lot. And now we're in a bedroom. Now keep going this way. We're going to sneak through the building storage here. If anyone discovers you, it's all over. But don't worry, everyone will be looking at me. All right, keep it moving. You in the back. Why are you moving so slow? Oh, wow, look at this ride. I am really, really impressed. The ride vehicles are little dog biscuits. Gracie would love it. That is awesome. Oh my god, am I gonna turn in? I'm gonna turn into a dog. Oh look! Oh, what if they gave me a Dalmatian? That would have been amazing. Oh my lord. That is just like Gracie too, going after the ice cream. <laughs> oh my lord, this is amazing.
Oh, here's my puppy avatar. Ooh, air dry. We just got adopted. You're my new family? Wow. I love this ride. You welcome That was one of the best universal rides I have ever ridden. And how amazing was the storyline? You get adopted at the end, like a family takes you home, so every single animal gets a family at the end of the ride. And I love it, that was amazing. Hats off to Universal for things like this, because that, that is high quality entertainment. Oh no, I was making my way up to go see the Waterworld show, but it looks like I missed the last showing of the day. I got too caught up with Dracula. I was following him around like a fangirl, but it was kind of worth it. I mean, he is Dracula, so I guess I'm just going to have to fly back to California eventually one day just so I can see the Waterworld show. I hear it's amazing. Since we're up this way, we might as well go in and check out Hogsmeade and uh, then go back down to the lower lot. I want to see that if there's any difference actually between the Hogsmeade here or in Orlando. It definitely looks different, I can tell you that. It certainly feels different like when you're walking in from just kind of in the middle of Hollywood Studios instead of coming in the way you would over at uh, Islands of Adventure. But, yep, still get impressed every time you walk through. Like, you know what I mean? Either in Hollywood or Orlando, it is beautiful and magnificent. That's kind of cool. This is where technically, like, Hagrid's would have been. <laughs> it definitely seems less crowded, actually, in this, this park. <laughs> Ooh! And I think there's better wand interactions. I should have brought my wand. Oh, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm actually really considering buying a wand over here in Hollywood and taking it back to Orlando. Like, I'm really thinking about it. Now it's time to get that reveal. The reveal of the castle. Wow. And I bet you they have the flight of Hippogriff over here too. Seriously, walking around uh, Hogsmeade, there was almost nobody like in a lot of these areas. I picked a great day to come here, but I definitely did not need that unlimited express pass. Like, I'm shocked with like the open space in this Hogsmeade. Look at this, there's so much room to walk around and not be shoulder to shoulder. Like, you got like space to kind of just breathe. <laughs> I like it, I like it a lot. Since there's not really anything for me to do that I can't do in Orlando over here, I think we're gonna head back down to the lower lot. Never seen Blue standing up like this. Look at that. She's looking dominating. This is her territory. She's probably just perfect protecting it. All right, all right. You want food? Eyes on me. Look this up. Easy. Well, now that we've been down here on the lower lot, I went and rode Jurassic World two more times. I'm thinking maybe we should head up and check out City Walk, because I do want to see what City Walk's like here. The park closes at 7, so it doesn't give us much time, but I'm really happy with my trip to Hollywood so far. And now we have made it to City Walk. Wow, though. This is impressive. Look at this. Look at the dragon up there. I like it. They got Johnny Rockets, NBC Grill, a lot of the same restaurants over in Orlando, but I came just so I can see Kong hanging off the side of the building up here. 
that was like my main purpose of coming over to City Walk. Literally, I, the only reason I wanted was just to see him right there. The only reason. Now that I made it over to City Walk, I wanted to get something to eat, but I didn't know, I didn't want like anything like KFC or Pizza Hut. So I came to Pink's, a Hollywood legend since 1939. Now this could be like a very touristy thing, but I've never eaten here, so I figured, let's do it. <laughs> let's get ourselves uh, a hot dog and uh, try a Hollywood legend. Here's a look at the menu. They have a lot of actually really unique dogs. They have the Mulholland Drive dog, they have the Aussie Spicy dog, they have the Betty White dog, a bacon burrito dog. Looks like it's got a pretty big following here too. Carl Weathers, Jimmy Fallon, Neil Patrick Harris, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, I'm excited. A fun little hot dog to cap off a wonderful experience at Universal Studios Hollywood and uh, I'm excited. It looks pretty good. I went with the chili dog with onions and french fries and uh, we're gonna dive right on in here. I'm pretty sure I might have just tricked myself into getting like a regular theme park dog but we'll find out here. We'll find out in a second. No! It's got a unique taste to it. It's got a good snap. I like that. I mean... It's a good hot dog. Like I said, it does have like a nice little snap to it, but it's not like the best hot dog in the world. You know what I mean? Actually, I don't even know what the best hot dog in the world is. That's a tough question. Well, now that we officially got some din din, I think it's time to call it a night. I think they're closing down all of uh, Universal Studios here. It, it shuts down so early. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had so much fun hanging out here. Jurassic World was amazing. I rode it a couple times. The studio tour I rode like three times. Uh, the Secret Life of Pets was great. I did The Mummy. The Mummy I didn't film though because I didn't know if I could bring the camera in. But it is a completely different ride than the one that's in Universal Orlando. And I really didn't talk about it, but I loved it. It was really cool. A little bit shorter, but still really interesting. Overall, I had so much fun here. I don't know if it's normally super busy. I wouldn't suggest getting the express pass. Maybe I should have checked the wait times first because I, I didn't get here until like 11.30, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. But uh, yeah, it was fun. I got to mark off another thing from my life goals and bucket list. And I'm so happy that I have a video now for uh, a lifetime to look back and enjoy. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We're gonna continue more California stuff and just enjoying and living the best life we could. We'll see you next time. Bye.